Not that long ago, most manufacturers only offered petrol or diesel cars. The choice of power sources now includes environmentally focused ones and some with zero emissions. But what will the future fuel of choice be? What will be the pros and cons? Well, we have three popular power options here. Rachel's gone for the plug-in hybrid. Erin's all electric and I'm packing some petrol. This is the seriously sexy Jaguar I-PACE, the first fully electric SUV from Jaguar or Land Rover. It's smart on the outside and a great blend of the familiar and the futuristic on the inside. The only issue is you might want to wait a few months before you buy one in the UK until there are a few more of the super rapid chargers available. This is the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, which keeps topping the UK's plug-in hybrid sales charts. As the name suggests, you do have to plug it in to charge it. A plug-in hybrid car generally has a petrol engine and an electric motor. The car uses both electricity stored in the batteries and fuel from the tank to make the car move. In most cases, you could do about 20 to 30 miles on all electric or zero emissions range. This is Alfa Romeo's first ever SUV and it makes a stylish entrance wherever you turn up. Named after the highest Alpine Pass, which is paradise for drivers, it lays its sporty intentions bare right from the start. Excellent. Petrol power is still the UK's most popular choice, mainly because the cars themselves are cheaper to buy than diesels and the fuel itself is cheaper too. If you drive between six and 7,000 miles a year and you're thinking about choosing diesel or petrol, then petrol will be the better choice for you. Generally, the interior of a hybrid or plug-in hybrid car is not much different to that of a petrol or diesel powered car. So in here, the only differences are that you've got a save charge mode, a pure EV mode, and these paddles behind the steering wheel, which don't change gear, but change the amount of regenerative braking that you have. Within the infotainment system, there's also a hybrid management system, which shows you things like charging and range. Currently in the UK, there are still government grants available for people buying electric vehicles, and they're wrapped into the price of the vehicle when you purchase it, you don't have to apply separately. The other issue, of course, is with charging. You can charge your vehicle at home overnight on a three pin domestic plug if you really want to. That'll take a good 10 to 12 hours. Then there are the UK's fast public chargers, which will take an 80% charge in about 85 minutes. Or you could wait for the 150 kilowatt rapid chargers to be spread out across the UK in 2019. And that will take you to 80% charge in 40 minutes. I have loved petrol ever since I was a 12 year old racing carts and I wish that every single car had a noisy, powerful V12 engine in it. Under the bonnet here isn't quite that, but what it has got is good. It's got a two litre turbo engine with 280 horsepower that can whip you up to 62 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds. But the most expensive Stelvio has got a Ferrari derived V6 petrol engine. Petrol engines today are more economical, they're more efficient, more responsive and quieter than ever. And if you're looking to buy a car on finance, with the recent decline of interest in diesel cars, then petrol is the most popular option. However, diesel does give you better fuel economy. And if you do about 15,000 miles or more a year, mainly on motorways, then diesel is still the better choice for you. difference between driving a normal automatic car and a hybrid, all of which are currently automatics. So you don't have to compromise on your driving experience. You do have to get a little bit used to regenerative braking, but apart from that. Importantly, you also don't have to worry about range anxiety like you would have to in a fully electric car. If you're a company car driver, you might see some tax benefits from driving a hybrid car and cars under 75 grams of CO2 emissions are currently exempt from the London congestion charge. However, it's not all super positive. If you do a lot of miles, especially on a motorway, you'll probably be better off with an efficient diesel car because you'll get a much better fuel economy. 
A plug-in hybrid car like this one also still needs a place to charge. To make the most of that battery power, it'll need to be charged for several hours a day. This one takes five to charge fully from a normal three pin plug. And a hybrid car will cost you more than an equivalent diesel car. So this might be something that you want to consider as well. EVs, it transpires, are easy to drive, which flies in the face of uh, one of the main anxieties about EV ownership, which is that it's somehow going to be confusing technology and a bit complicated. Not so. Uh, you've got essentially an automatic gearbox type transmission, as in drive, neutral, reverse and park, so you can drive them on an automatic only licence. They're nice and quiet. Acceleration is immediate and smooth. And it's got this wonderful regenerative braking, which once you get used to it, and it only takes five minutes to get used to it, is great. It means that when you lift off the throttle, as I will now, the car starts to slow before you touch the brake pedal. And that's because it's taking that energy, which would otherwise be lost through hot brakes, and sending it back to the battery to give you some extra charge, which is a fab thing and very clever. And the other thing, range anxiety amongst consumers, will I be able to get where I'm going on one charge? If not, where can I refuel? Well, that's starting to abate as more electric vehicles come on the market with better ranges. The Jaguar I-Pace has got a range, a quoted range of about 290 miles. There's a lot of things to think about when buying your next car and fuel type is probably one of the biggest choices. So how do all the numbers stack up? One I-Pace card for you. Thank you very much. One Stelvia card for you. Right, ladies, points mean prizes. Quickest acceleration to 62 miles per hour, Vicky. 5.7 seconds. I'm out 11 seconds. <gasps> 4.8 seconds, five points to me. That's quick. Okay, filling up time required, Rachel. Couple of minutes plus five hours on the battery on a three pin plug. For my home wall charging box, 12.9 hours. Uh, Just a couple of minutes for me and I'm done. CO2 emissions. Vicky. 161 grams per kilometre. 40 grams per kilometre. Oh, zero grams per kilometre. Another five points for the IPA. Coolest car. I don't think I'm winning this one. <laughs> well, I think that my car has got a great silhouette and looks good outside the school gates. I'd agree. But I do have the sexiest EV on sale right now. Yeah. So, five points to you? 15 so far. <gasps> Most practical. I think this one is mine. I think it is. You've got to have the biggest boot space. Yeah. Fair dues. Yeah. Okay, what about miles on a tank full of whatever you've got? Ooh, I'm 292 miles. Okay. 33 all electric, more than 300. Okay. Petrol. <laughs> 443 miles, <laughs> yeah. Five points to me. So I have got 10 points. I have 15. Oh, the iPace wins. If you want the fuss-free trips to the school gate or across country, then petrol is the one for you. And this Alfa Romeo Stelvio has got exciting handling and potent engines, most notably the Aston Martin rivaling range topper. If you want the flexibility of some electric driving and lower CO2 emissions but can't quite commit to fully electric, then a plug-in hybrid could be for you. This Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV is really spacious and has low running costs. And if you want something environmentally friendly, cheap to power and quiet to drive, then an electric vehicle could well be for you. I adore this Jaguar I-Pace. It looks absolutely fantastic and the range is pretty good too.